Hey everyone, it's Anthony Ramos here. Okay, it is National Coming Out Day. Happy National Coming Out Day, everyone. And today I'm very excited to talk to two people um, who are, you know, part of the GLAAD family um, and also just happen to be in Star Trek Discovery, which is back for season three, October 15th. Um, say hello to Wilson Cruz and Blue Del Barrio. Hi, everybody. How are you? Okay. So, Good. You know, um, Blue, I want to start with you because I just want to congratulate you because, you know, entering the Star Trek universe, um, especially with Star Trek Discovery being such a diverse, uh, progressive and inclusive series, uh, what does it mean for you to be kind of stepping into this world? Um, I don't think I could have been luckier with the first job. Um, having <laughs> this diverse and this incredible um it's it's beautiful and it's what every cast should look like I think <laughs> like there's no there's no reason for you know every cast and every show not to look like ours does um it's it's Wilson you said this um a few weeks ago but it's it's what the world looks like so it makes sense <laughs> yeah. um, but I got really lucky because everyone is absolutely incredible and and yeah, it still feels very surreal. And, and Wilson, you know, you've been obviously a part of this series since the beginning. Um, such an incredible storyline. Um, and I can't wait to see, and I know you won't tell me what's happening in season three, but- Why would I spoil it for you? I know, I, I, wanna, <laughs> I, wanted to, I wanna roll out with it each week, but for right. you, how, um, what does it mean to you to have, you know, someone like Blue joining the cast, you know, someone who's younger, who's kind of, you know, this representation of the next generation, which, you know, we love so much. What does that mean for you? You know, it's the reason why I wanted to have this conversation. Um, I couldn't be more excited about Blue um, joining our cast. Um, I, I, it's, it's incredibly fulfilling for me after uh, 25 years in this industry to finally see uh, real representation in media. Um, and, and I'm so incredibly proud of being a part of a, a show that really is taking the lead um, on, on making sure that our, our screens look like our world. Um, and what Blue was saying earlier that, you know, my, my, my take is um, we're, not, we're not reinventing the wheel here. This is what the world actually looks like. And so why shouldn't it represent us and, and look like the world that we actually live in? So these are the inhabitants of the world. Um, you know, I was reading um, a, an editorial this morning um, by Marilyn Robinson and in it, she talks about what it means to, to love a country, but there's, she, there was a line in the, in, the, in the column which rang true for me and I wanted to read it to you guys today, Absolutely. which is, um, cause I think it applies to, to National Coming Out Day, which by the way, was a, um, started as a, as a political effort. You know, it was a way for us to use visibility as a political tool to say, we, if, if you know us, if you understand us, if you understand that we're part of your family and your communities and your neighbors, um, then perhaps we can bridge those divides. Um, and National Coming Out Day was an effort uh, to get more and more people to take that risk and to use their lives as a way to um, harness the power of a community and to harness our stories. Um, but in this article, Marilyn Robinson says that human beings are sacred and so therefore equal. We are asked to see one another in the light of a singular inalienable worth that would make a family of us if we let it. And so National Coming Out Day is an opportunity for us to come out to our national families and to um, really press to them that we are part of this culture and this society and we're an, an integral part of the fabric of this country and that we should be uh, vocal, active participants in this democracy. And I hope everybody has their voting plan uh, in place. Absolutely. Uh, thank you for sharing that. that. I mean, that I really, I think that's exactly what we needed to hear. And it's so in line with today. Um, Blue, for you, you know, this is really your first big break. Um, 
And, you know, for someone like Wilson, who's, you know, told his coming out story many times, for you, it's kind of like you're still in this moment of kind of coming out to the world. How have you been handling that? Because, you know, there's, you know, there's, it's a lot of, there's a lot when you are on a new TV show, there's a lot of interest and, you know, we're here to help you. But how has your, you know, journey been to kind of just kind of coming out in this way? Um, I want to be as transparent as possible because it is coming out day. And yeah. I feel like I'm still going through it. I feel like mm -hmm. I'm still coming out. And it honestly, at the beginning, couldn't have been messier. <laughs> and, um, but I think it's important to be able to talk about it that way. I think it's important for me to be able to sit here and say that it is still difficult and I'm still going up and down and it's still a process and I'm still, you know, regaining confidence for myself and discovering more about myself. And you know, I, I don't owe it to anyone now that it's kind of, you know, in the media to do anything differently. I, I should be able to take the time for myself to, to do what I need to do. And that's that by itself has taken me a while to to come to terms with because um, this this show is incredibly meaningful to me um, because if I had had characters like these, uh, like Gray and Adira when I was eight or nine years old, I, I cannot imagine how different my life might have been. So I, I hope so badly that this can be that for someone else, for some other, you know, 10 year old kid. Um, but I also, on top of that, have to say that like, I am still new, I am still going through everything and I am still discovering a lot about myself. So no pun intended. Yeah. <laughs> you discover it, yeah. You know, I, I wanted to say, I wanted to say that, again, I, I meant to say this earlier, I started to say, which is the reason why I wanted to have this conversation is because as much as I, I love Blue and I do, like we've become family to each other. What I wanted to talk about was, you know, people are sick and tired of hearing my story. I've been talking about it for 25 years, but there are parallels here uh, between Blue and I, which is that when they decided to come out, um, they did it because of the job that they that they were lucky enough to uh, to garner, and that was the same situation with me, right? I was just coming out and figuring out who I was as well, but I also was presented with an opportunity to to share okay. um, and to help grow a conversation um, at the time, which was about LG, LGB. Let's be honest, um, and now we've. 25, 26 years later, um, are ready to have this conversation about gender and about inclusiveness and representation in terms of that population. And so I think that having Blue as a part of our cast and this character on the show is going to go a long way towards um, expanding that conversation. But I know firsthand how life-saving this representation is going to be for people. Um, and I couldn't be more excited. I couldn't agree with you more. And Blue, you know, and I think it's an important thing for us to talk about because, you know, it is National Coming Out Today. And, you know, you said you're still kind of in the middle of it. You're figuring it out. The, the, the thing is, there are no rules for coming out. There's no rules for when. There's no rules for how. You do it on your own terms. You do what feels good to you, what feels comfortable. And I think, you know, we have to stress that to people out there watching because, you know, there are no rules. You, you do it how it feels right and when um so you know i'm glad when it's, yeah and when it's safe right you know it's 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 not just about being able to to come out um but also it's about creating um, a safe environment in which people can do that yeah and you know for you blue i think you know one of the things that you touched on was you know if you had a character like this when you were eight years old if you were able to turn on the tv or stream or whatever we can do now and, and, and see a character like that. Um, you know, the character being non-binary, finally, I think we're seeing um, some more representation in that. What does it mean for you to be a part of bringing a, a non-binary character to the masses and hopefully, you know, getting people to understand what being non-binary means? It's incredibly meaningful to me because I the first non-binary person that I was introduced to and and the first time I even heard the term 
um, was when I saw Lachlan Watson on uh, The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. I hadn't met a non-binary person before that. Mm -hmm. so seeing Lachlan on, on, on my screen meant everything to me because even before I knew how they identified, I saw them and I was like, there's something, there's something there and I'm feeling things. Didn't, um, you, didn't you tell me that you, that that depiction actually helped you define for yourself? Yeah, hundred percent. Right? Yeah, it 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 really did, and and that was kind of the beginning of everything. As soon as I, you know, looked into them and and looked into the term, I kind of knew immediately. It's then the rest of the world that kind of muddies things up, <laughs> right. really. Kind of then all the judgment you know starts from everyone else, but it is that first moment of knowing that is a really beautiful thing, and it's. It's really interesting to me just because it, it happened, I guess, again later in life. Because I guess if I'd had the term, I would have come out as a child. <laughs> like, right. Yeah. Well, I, and that's why, and that's why this is so valuable, right? Because yeah. now someone else can have that experience right. by watching you. <laughs> and so, you know, my what I want, I, I literally wanted to have this conversation today just so that I could thank you personally for what I know will be um, a challenging, um, but rewarding and life altering experience. Um, I think when we extend ourselves and our experiences to other people and gift them to them as, um, as an invitation to be more of themselves, um, we are being our best selves in that moment. And I think you are being your best self in this moment. And I personally am personally grateful for you for willing to take that risk. Yeah. Um, and you're so young, right, Blue? How old are you? Like you're 20? I just turned 23. 23. Okay. Well, 2020. But yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a wonderful thing for someone who is as young as you are to be having, um, to be starting these conversations and inspiring people. I mean, get ready. Your, your, uh, I mean, if they haven't already, your DMS and fan mail will be coming in with these stories about, you know, kids finally feeling represented. Um, but you know, actually that's a good question. I want to talk. So Wilson, you know, you, we all know like the Star Trek fans die yeah. hard. They, go deep, you know, they want to know every detail, they read between the lines, they, you know, all of the secrets. So what advice do you have for Blue for kind of navigating those kind of fandom moments and kind of just the universe? Because there is so many people that go crazy over it and, you know, it can be overwhelming. What advice do you have for Blue to kind of get into the Star Trek universe and not lose their minds? Well, listen, I'm, I'm still looking for somebody to advise me on the subject. <laughs> so, um, so take this with a, with a grain of salt. But, um, you know, I think mm -hmm. what helps me uh, when the fans get a little um, aggressive, is that a good word? Uh, I, <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I think what helps me uh, understand a bit more is that it's coming from a deep love for the franchise and for the memories and the um, and the lessons that it has taught and brought to, brought to them. So, you know, it's coming from a, a real place. Um, I will also say that there is, there is a weight that firsts, I call them firsts, people who are, who, who do things first. There's a weight that those people have to carry. Um, and it's part of, it's part of this process when you sign up to be an educator, that people are resistant to new information and some of it will be difficult for them to, to digest and it will take some time, um, but that your job is to listen, to be open, to, recept to be receptive, um, but not to take it on personally. Um, because it's not about you. It's about their growth and understanding you. I mean, that's, that's great. I love that. Um, you know, thinking about uh, coming out day, I think there are still a lot of people that are, you know, out there struggling with it, with themselves, not ready 
Um, what advice can either of you, you know, say say to anyone who might be, you know, still struggling with it potentially with themselves, you know, maybe not ready to tell their friends and family? Um, you know, Blue, I know you're still kind of in the middle of it, but is there anything for you that you've found in your journey so far that, you know, you think would be helpful for anyone out there watching? Um, I do think that one of the most beautiful sides of, of, of coming out and getting to do that is that we get to choose our own family and we get to do that. And that is crazy and that's beautiful and it's wonderful. And it's also incredibly important to have that family to support you in wherever you wanna go and what you wanna do with your life and to be able to come out to them and feel supported and feel loved. Um, you don't have to rush. You don't owe anyone anything. This is your life. <laughs> you do what you want with it. Um, so yeah, really take care of yourself and, and take however long you need, take the time you need and make sure people are around you who love you. Absolutely. Wilson, do you want to add anything onto that? Yeah. <laughs> um, I, you know, I, I think that when we, when we own the power of our stories and we allow ourselves to be vulnerable to share them, um, it comes with a little bit of a responsibility. Um, not everyone is going to welcome you with open arms in the first five minutes. That's okay. Um, we have to be as generous and vulnerable um, in, in the moment that we share um, and, and disclose um, to, our, to our recipients that, uh, as we expect them to be for us. Um, and patience is a big thing and vulnerability is a big thing and being willing to be authentic in front of them and share what's uncomfortable in order to educate. Um, that's how we create the beloved community that Dr. King spoke of. And so let's do that work and then let's vote and change the entire country because we have massive amounts of work to do. You know, you know, Wilson, before I let you go, I think it's a very good thing that we should talk about. Um, voting is, important we all know that i mean we know you and i we all know that but people out there some people still think it doesn't matter that their vote doesn't count it doesn't matter what the election is going to happen no matter what why remind anyone out there that is watching this why we must show up we must vote in november me yes please okay i'm gonna try <laughs> to say it without expletives <laughs> <laughs> um you know, we are citizens of a democratic republic. And that means that we as citizens are part of the governing body of this country. And so we are at the, at the head of the government. And so when we give up our right to use our voice and our vote, we are giving up our responsibility to each other and to ourselves and to our families. Um, we also give up the right to complain when things don't go our way, when we don't participate in the election. Um, we're not always going to have perfect candidates. We're never going to actually have perfect candidates. We came close once. <laughs> That's very rare. Um, when we go into the voting booth, we have binary choices only in the voting booth <laughs> in america um so when we go in there we have to choose what's best for us and for our family and the people that we love and whoever comes closest to achieving that for us is who we vote for it's not about a popularity contest it's about what's best for this country and how we move forward and how we include as many people in the success of it as possible and who are the people who are going to allow us to go on that journey and make it easier and better for all of us. So 
you're the boss in the United States of America and I need you to be a good boss and show up for work. And you have multiple um, options as to how you participate. So you can mail in your vote, you can show up on the day, you can drop it off on the day, um, but I need you to participate. Your country needs you. You hear that people? Vote, November. Um, well, both of you, thank you so, so much um, for this conversation. I think, you know, it was really impactful and I hope a lot of people that need to hear it, hear it, especially on today, National Coming Out Day. And reminder everyone that Star Trek Discovery, season three will begin to be available on CBS All Access on October 15th. I can't wait to see what happens. Blue, welcome to the Star Trek universe. Wilson, thank you for all that you do oh, always. I have one last thing to say. Happy yeah. birthday to my beautiful nephew, Cruz, who's two years old today. Oh, happy birthday, Cruz. Oh, I love that. Um, <laughs> well, thank you both so much. Thank we you. Will talk thank you for doing soon. this. Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure. Stay safe and we'll talk soon. All my love to Glad. Mwah. Mwah. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye.